Bison, we're going to start today by getting our hands and fingers ready for some activities. Our first activity is a clothespin pom-pom pick up. Now, if you don't have pom-poms, grab some cotton balls, grab some little crumpled pieces of paper that you make yourself, anything like that will work. And we're gonna use the clothespin, almost like a beak of a bird, to pick up the pom-poms. Now, we use our pinching out and put the pointer finger on top, thumb on bottom. When I squeeze them together, the clothespin opens up. When I let go, it closes again, and I can pick up the pom-poms. So what we're going to do is scatter pom-poms all around. Now, you may do this on a table. It may be even more fun to do on the floor and get out your clothespin. You're going to need a container to put the pom-poms in. It could be one big container where all the pom-poms go, or you might use a container with lots of compartments and do a little sorting while you're picking up pom-poms. So we're gonna grab our clothespin and pick up the pom-poms. You might grab a timer and race yourself. Pink, pink. And see how fast you can pick up the pom-poms. You might scatter them all over the room and make it much harder to run and race as you squeeze, let go, pick up, squeeze, release. I'm going to pick up all the pom-poms. I did it! And my fingers are feeling warmed up and ready to go today. You might race your brother or your sister to see who can pick up the most. You might race the clock. You might just do some sorting. Work your finger muscles with this clothespin pom-pom pickup. Next, we're going to use a paper plate to make a flying saucer that we can really throw like a frisbee. It's going to look like a UFO, an unidentified, that means we don't know what we're seeing, an unidentified flying object, a spaceship, a UFO. Hmm, I know a song about a spaceship. Five little friends on a flying saucer flew around the earth one day. They looked left and right, but they didn't like the sight, so one friend flew away. Five minus one equals four. Four little friends on a flying saucer flew around the earth one day. They looked left and right, but they didn't like the sight, so one friend flew away. Four minus one equals three. Three little friends on a flying saucer flew around the earth one day. They looked left and right, but they didn't like the sight, so one friend flew away. Three minus one equals two. Two little friends in a flying saucer flew around the earth one day. They looked left and right, but they didn't like the sight, so one friend flew away. Two minus one equals one. One little friend in a flying saucer flew around the earth one day. They looked left and right, but they didn't like the sight, so one friend flew away. One minus one equals none, and the number name for none is zero. Do you believe in aliens? 
Do you think way out in space, there are other creatures that live? I don't know. Some people do. Some people don't. It's your opinion. But today, we're going to make a flying saucer out of this paper plate. And this will be one that we can toss like a frisbee. So what we're going to do is cut across this and fold some up and some down to make a wild UFO shape that we can then toss around the house. And I'm going to show you how. All right, so grab some scissors and some markers to decorate and let's make a flying saucer out of this paper plate. All right, first we're gonna draw our lines that we're going to use to cut. We're going to make an X, 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 X. So start at the top and slide across, frog jump, slide the other way, X. My favorite sound in the alphabet. X, X, X. Then we're going to start at the top and pull a line down. Start at the side and pull a line across. Now we have a big star shape. I'm going to fold my plate along the center line. So I see one, two, three lines. That's where I'm going to cut. Thumb, fingers, thumb on top. Open, close, open, close. I'm going to start where the lines meet in the center. And I'm going to cut out to the edge. Now, cutting through this paper plate uh, 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 takes some muscle. But I think you can do it. Find another line. And cut across. One more. Let's cut the center line straight up. Ugh. Ugh. Now that we have all these lines cut, it looks like there's lots of little triangle pieces. But I do see two that haven't been cut yet. Open your plate up. Slide your scissor bottom half. Under, top, on top, under, on top, and cut out. Same with the other side. There's a line that hasn't been cut. We'll put the bottom half of the scissor under the line, the top half of the scissor on top. Open, close. Now I have lots of little triangle pieces, lots and lots. I am going to do a pattern up, then down, up, then down, and fold these triangles. So I'm starting here, and I fold it up. Next, I fold it down, up, down. A pattern has things in an order. A pattern has things in an order. A pattern has things in an order. Repeat it again and again. Fold it up, fold it down. Fold it up, fold it down. Fold it up. Bend, push, 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 boink. Fold it down, bend, push, push, push. Fold it up. Up, down, up, last one, down. So now I have some points coming up and some points coming down. This looks wild, like an alien spaceship, like a UFO, like a flying saucer. My next step is to decorate. Decorate however you want. Maybe you want to put an astronaut in his helmet. Maybe you want to put aliens or stars. Maybe you want a spaceship. Maybe. 
be, you're going to put planets and moons. Decorate your spaceship however you like. Now you're ready for the fun part. When we toss, this will fly through the air, swirling in circles, just like a frisbee. See this flying saucer fly? You're going to hold the edge of the flying saucer. Twist your wrist and arm toward you and then fling it forward like this to let it go. Let's see that again. Wow! It soars through the air. I can get my flying saucer to go all the way across the room almost. Woo! Have fun throwing your flying saucers today and running and chasing after them to pick them up. If you and a friend make one, you could even see whose go the farthest. Last project today is kind of one that uses your memory and your mind to organize and put things in the right order. So we are going to use some Q-tips. But there's something we need to do to these Q-tips first. And I'll show you. We're going to put the Q-tips on a piece of paper so we protect our table. And we're going to color these Q-tips. I'm going to make one side of this Q-tip green. I'm going to make the other side of this Q-tip blue. I'm using a marker to rub onto the cotton. I have a green and a blue Q-tip. I am going to make up another one pink on one side. Maybe I'll do orange on the other. Color these Q-tips. I'm going to do another. Let's see. I hold the Q-tip down with one hand and I push it forward and back to get all the sides colored. Let's do a purple. I'm doing lots of little markings on the Q-tip so it, the cotton changes colors. Purple on one side and how about yellow on the other? Color, color, color. I'm rolling it by sliding this finger, the one with my ring, forward and backwards. There, I've got purple and yellow. Let me try another. How about yellow and blue this time? You're going to make several of these, lots of different color patterns. You want them to have different colors on both sides because next you're going to challenge your brain and make some pattern cards to match the Q-tips to. I will show you how to play next. So once you have your Q-tips colored, all different colors on both sides. You're going to set them to the side. These will be your options, what you can pick from to build your challenge cards. Now, anytime we mark the Q-tip, I'm going to do a straight line in brown for the stick part of the Q-tip. And I'm going to design a design. I'm going to use one Q-tip across, two Q-tips across, three Q-tips for this design. Now, what colors do I have? I have one that's pink and orange. How about I put pink on one side of one and orange on the other side? An adult can help you or a friend could make challenge cards for you and you can try to match them or you can make challenge cards and try to give them to a friend. I see a Q-tip that's green and blue. I'm going to put green on one side and I'll put blue on the other. I see a Q-tip that's purple and yellow. I'll put yellow on one side and purple. There's one challenge card. Let's make one more challenge card together and then we'll try the challenges. 
I'm going to do a Q-tip sliding up, one. I'm going to do a Q-tip tall, two. I'm going to do a Q-tip across, three. And I'm going to do another Q-tip, four. Hmm, now what color Q-tips do I have? I have one that's blue and yellow on the other side. So I'll make one of the Q-tips blue and yellow. Hmm. I have one that's orange and pink. I'll put pink on one side. I'll put orange on the other. Ooh, I have one that's pink and green. I'll put pink on one side and green on the other. I'm going to do one last challenge card. I see one that's blue and green. I'll put blue on one side and green on the other. I have two Q-tip building challenge cards. Can I match the pattern I drew and build what I see? I'm going to try. Let's see. Come down here with me. Okay. Here is our Q-tip pattern card. And here are our Q-tips to pick from. I see one going long ways. It is orange on top and pink on bottom. This one has orange and pink. I'll set it going long ways. Oop. The pink is down here. Let me flip it. There. Next, I see by the orange, a blue and a green. A blue and a, no, yellow. A blue and a green. The blue's over here and the green is over here. So I will set it there. Blue, green. Then I see a yellow and a purple. Here's yellow and purple. Purple's by under the green on this side. Yellow's under the blue on this side. <gasps> Does it match my pattern card? Yes! Let me see if I can do the other pattern card we created. Oh, this one looks tricky. There's a lot of Q-tips. One, two, three, four Q-tips. Which four will I need? I need blue and green. I need pink and green. I need blue and yellow. And I need orange and pink. I don't need purple yellow. Can I set these out in the pattern I see? I see green up top and blue on bottom. Here's my green and blue. Let me twist so green is up top, green, blue on bottom. I see pink and green. Can I grab my pink and green? And, oh, green is on top. Twist, there's green on top. Green, green, blue, pink. Now there's one that goes across. It has orange on one end and pink on the other. Here's my orange and pink q-tip, the pink is by the pink. The orange is by the green. Is this right? Orange is by green, but pink is by blue. No, that's not right. Let me flip it. Pink is by pink and orange is by green. It goes across. That's right. Last, I have one that slides at an angle. It has blue by green and yellow down by pink. Here's my blue and yellow. I see the blue is by the green and the yellow is by the pink. It slides at an angle. Does this? Look like my pattern card. Blue, green, green, blue, green, green, blue, pink, yellow, blue, pink, yellow, orange to pink, orange to pink. It does. We matched our pattern card. 
How many different patterns can you come up with? How many different designs can you make? And then once you've made them, can you build them? Challenge your brain to see what's on the paper, whoa, see what's on the paper, and build it with your hand in the right order. Bye, Bison. Have a great day.